So let's look at an example in order to think about visualizing the data. Um, so I wanted to talk about executive orders. So you've probably heard of executive orders. Um, there's something that's always a really uh, contentious issue whenever there's a president. So, you know, if you have a Republican president, uh, the Democrats are up in arms saying, ah, there's been so many executive orders done by this president. You know, they're acting above uh, the, the law. They're, they're going beyond Congress. Uh, they're not supposed to be doing this, you know, yada, yada, yada. And you have the flip side when there's a Democrat who's the president. Uh, you'll have the Republicans um, who will be saying the same sort of thing. So <clears throat> it's kind of interesting to think about in looking at executive orders. So if you're not familiar with an executive order, is, it's basically um, it's the way in which the president of the United States manages the operations of their branch. And they do this through executive orders. So an executive order is a means of issuing federal directives in the United States. And they're used by the president to manage operations of the federal government. Now, they'll stay in place until they've been canceled, revoked, or whatever. You know, uh, maybe they've also been shown to be unconstitutional. Um, any president at any time can cancel an executive order, including an executive order by their, press, uh, their the preceding president. So any, any orders that President Obama created, Donald Trump, uh, President Trump could also then go and revoke. And so the president spends their first few, uh, first few weeks in office looking at executive orders. So let's look at executive orders in the uh, United States. So something to sort of think about right now is maybe just a thought experiment is, what do you think the shape of the number of executive orders issued by each president looks like? Do you think that it's going to look, um, do you think that it's going to look somewhat uniform? Or do you think it's gonna look like a bell shape where maybe most of them are really in the middle and then there's fewer on the outside? Do you think it's going to have skew? And mind you, we just introduced that idea, and maybe you've seen it in your textbook now. Um, but just try to think about what you expect it to look like. And here is what it looks like. So this is what's called a dot plot. A dot plot is probably a very new concept to you. You've probably never seen them. Um, often, a dot plot will correspond to an individual case or unit. So this could be one president. And then this would be another president. Uh, this dot right here would be a president. This dot right here would be a president. And then this dot right here would be a president. So there should be 45 dots on this plot. Now, sometimes the dots correspond to more than just one, um, one case or unit, but I don't think they do in this particular plot. Um, so a dot plot is kind of like a histogram, which you've probably learned about. Uh, and it basically just tells us the frequency of this number of executive orders that have been issued. So if we look at this, what do we think that this looks like? Well, we see that there's a lot of values over here and it's, it's lined up at zero, but that doesn't really mean it's zero. It probably means that there's a very few number. It looks like, you know, cause you can see on the X axis there, it goes from zero to 500. And maybe on the Y axis, you would list frequency or count but this is always implied in a dot plot, so it's not always shown. Um, so we see that there's quite a few presidents that have done very few executive orders. But then we see there's a handful of presidents who've issued quite a lot. And we see sort of starting at 500, we have, you know, a little under 500, we have two. And then after 500, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven presidents. And we have one president that's really far away with over 3,500 executive orders that they've um, uh, issued. Now, I kind of wonder, who is this president? And maybe you're also wondering who is that president. And I'll get to that momentarily. Um, so if we look at this, how do we describe this data? What does it look like? Well, what I in, what I do when I look in data, at data is I try to draw a curve over it. And so if I were to draw a curve over this, it would look like this, right? It would kind of, it kind of is a smooth curve. It kind of flows, uh, kind of smooths out all of the data. And see how it goes to the right? It moves to the right. So that the tail, the tail extends to the right. Because the tail extends to the right, we would call this right skewed. 
Okay, we would call this right skewed. And this value over here, 3,500, and very likely this value right here, maybe 1,800, these two values we would consider outliers. And an outlier is basically an extreme value. Now, um, outliers don't mean that it's fake data or that it should be deleted or anything like that. It just means that these two particular data values are quite extreme and unusual relative to the others. So if I'm looking at this, uh, at this plot here, I'm describing it as being right skewed and I'm describing it as having, out, out, of having two outliers. That's how I would describe it. So this is a dot plot. Let's view it with a histogram. So here's a histogram. We see the same general shape again, and you've probably seen histograms before. What a histogram does is it groups the cases or units um, into, uh, into bins uh, and essentially categorizes the, the data, turns it into a discrete categorical variable. And so like we see here that this, that this bin right here, this first one corresponds to values of zero to 50. And then this one would be 50 to 100. And then this would be 101 to um, 150. And I, and I meant to say 51. This one would be, oh, you probably caught that, that that's a typo. Instead, that should say 500. And then 501 to 1,000. And then just trying to add another zero in here and so on. OK. So we're seeing that there's roughly been about mm, maybe 38 presidents that have issued between zero and 500. And just if you're curious, this includes Obama, this includes Trump, this includes uh, Bill Clinton, who, uh, as well as George W. Bush. <clears throat> and I think it includes uh, Bush Sr. as well. I don't think Bush Sr. issued very many. Okay. Now, this over here is still that one individual, and this individual is FDR. And maybe you guessed it was FDR. Uh, as you probably learned, FDR was president for a very long time, so it makes sense why he would have maybe more executive orders than everybody else. But he was also president during the Great Depression and during World War II, so he was president during some very instrumental moments in American history, and so he used his executive orders to do a lot of different things, including setting up the New Deal, I believe. So again, looking at this, if we're thinking about the shape, we still see that shape is left skewed. I mean, right skewed. Excuse me. It's the tail goes to the right. It's right skewed, and then we see that this there's this outlier over here. Now you can represent a histogram as a frequency table. So this is uh, basically like a frequency table we saw in section 2.1. And so these would be your categories, zero to 500 executive orders issued, 501 to 1000, 1001 to 1500, and so on and so on and so on. And then we see the frequency count, the number of presidents there are who issued that many uh, executive orders. <clears throat> Now, one thing you probably um, are aware of, or maybe you're not aware of, is that this is sort of uh, stat crunch, the software that we're using in class. This is how it, by default, broke the data up. But you could very easily have created much smaller categories. And here I've created much smaller bins. I think what I did when I did this was 50. So now each of these little bars corresponds to a width of 50. Whereas before here, oops, these correspond to a width of 500. And we see that the general shape is still the same. It still has this, this left skew, I mean right skew. Man, I don't know why I keep saying that, I'm very sorry. This right skew. And we still see the presence of these two outliers. But in many cases, changing the width of the bin can have a profound impact. So that's just something to sort of be aware of. Whenever you're looking at a, a uh, quantitative variable and you're looking at it as a histogram you're inherently putting it into bins and that can affect the shape and that can affect how you look at it so <clears throat> this is another plot um, this plot is of the life expectancy of the countries I think of all countries all 217 countries as of 2016 so how would you describe the shade of shape of this distribution would you say that it's symmetric
Is it symmetric? I would say no. It definitely doesn't have symmetry. Would you say that there's skew? And I, I would say yes, there is. So how do we identify this skew? So again, I would encourage you to draw a curve over it. And when we're drawing a curve over it, we're essentially drawing what's known as a density curve. And so if we were to draw a curve over this, trying to just highlight the main features of the data, it might look like that. And you see how the data is tailing off to the left? This is gonna be called left skewed. And in this particular plot, I don't see any evidence of outliers. So um, there is no, there's no evidence of outliers. I would just describe this as left skewed. So you go through symmetry, you go through skew, and then you go through outliers. Now I wanna point out something. You cannot have symmetry and have skew. So it happens over and over and over again throughout the semester um, that students will be describing plots and they'll be describing them as being symmetric but skewed. So you can't have symmetry and have skewed. They're, they're opposites of one another, okay? So if you have symmetry, there is inherently no skew. If you have skew, then there cannot be symmetry. So just keep that in mind. They are exclusive things. You're symmetric or you're, you're skewed. You can't be both. <clears throat> so this is a plot from your, your book, and it's just showing some shapes with density curves. So I showed you that we sort, I like to draw a density curve over my plots um, to get a sense of what the shape looks like. And since, uh, since you're looking at this via um, a screen, it maybe is helpful to just sort of sketch it on a piece of paper while you're, while you're watching. So we see here we have the skew to the right. That was the case of the executive orders. Here we have the skew to the left. This was the case of the life expectancy. And in this one right here, this one that's symmetric and bell-shaped, um, this one does not have any skew, right? It is perfectly like a bell. And then this one over here is symmetric, but not bell-shaped, uh, the one that's all the way to the right. This one is symmetric, but not bell-shaped, but this one is symmetric and bell-shaped. See how the words symmetric and skew do not appear together? Make sure you don't do that too. So a density curve really is just a way of sort of drawing a curve over, all, over the histogram or over the dot plot to get a sense of the general shape. 